Hello again, Clinton here from Core Electronics. Welcome to chapter five of our MicroPython for Microbit workshop. In this one, we're gonna be having a look at the radio on the microbit and also list structures. So what we're gonna be making is this little program that lets us choose a letter and send it to other microbit boards around. So let's first have a talk about how this radio works. The microbit doesn't have very much memory for storing programs um, as compared to something like the more advanced um, MicroPython boards like the ESP32. So it can't maintain MicroPython and the entire Bluetooth libraries. So instead what it has is a cut down version of the Bluetooth library, which allows us to send messages um, out into the world where any microbits around that are listening will receive that message. So when I press the button to send, all the other microbits around can receive that message and read it. This is called a one-to-many system and works much like the radio in your car, hence why it's called radio. There are ways, kind of more advanced tricks, but we're not gonna look into those today. We're just gonna have a look at how we can send messages to other microbits and how we read them. So let's get started by having a look at the code. In this case, we're gonna import microbit and we're also going to import the radio. The first thing we need to do is actually turn the radio on um, because by default, to save power, the microbit has the radio off. So we turn the radio on by just using radio.on with the brackets. Then we're going to declare a, a list. So this is a particular type of data structure or variable and it lets us store multiple values under the same name. Um, I can add items to the list. So if I wanted to, I could have more, so I could go to D or and keep going like that. I can also have things like strings in here. So I can have, uh, I could have words. Um, so I could change this to cat, for example, um, which would then send that, which would then store that value in there. Lists in Python are indexed from zero. So this would be the zero element. This would be one, this would be two, and this would be three. What we're gonna do in this program is we're going to create a variable that represents what index we're currently pointing to in this list. And so to start with, we wanna start at the first element, so we're gonna go with zero. Then we wanna run the code so that it will show what character we've currently got selected. So we, to do this, we just go microbit.display.show and then we enter the character in the list that we're indexed at. To do this, we go alphabet, which is the name of our list, and then we use square brackets, and the number within there will be the index we're pointing to. So alpha index represents the number zero at the moment, so that will be showing A. If I change this to a number, I could go three, that would be pointing at the final element. If I put minus one, that will also point at the final element in the list. So now we're gonna use another while true loop. What we're gonna do from this point is we're gonna have several if statements that will check for several conditions. The first of those is going to be if the A button is pressed. So what we're gonna do when the A button is pressed is we're gonna take our index, our alpha index, and we're gonna add one to it. So this will move us forward in the list. Now, something to be aware of in Python is that if we index something that's not in our list, so if I were to index um, three in the initial condition when I only had three elements in the list, that would be pointing to the fourth element in the list, which isn't there. And Python will throw an error and your code will stop working. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put a condition in to check whether or not we've reached the end of our list. And to do this, we're going to use um, the len function. So what this function does is it takes a list and returns the number of elements. So we're going to return three elements or four elements, depending on if I've added, if you've added a D to the code. And what this, what this means is it will be indexed, it will have the number of elements in there, but because we're indexing from zero, we need to subtract one from that so that it represents the final element or the length, the, the final index of the list. If we've exceeded our final index, we're gonna set it back to zero, so we're back at the start. Then, once we've checked to make sure that we're within the range of our list, we're then going 
to display the character again. And so this will display whatever character we're pointing at. We're then going to sleep for a moment just to save computer cycles. And we're going to sleep for 125 milliseconds, which relates roughly to the, the frame rate of a movie. So the next condition that we're going to check is this if button B is pressed. So when our second button's pressed, what we're going to do is we're going to use the, lab the radio library. And then we're going to send alphabet and our index. So it's important to note here that we don't actually have to send a single character. We could send entire sentences or um, even other variables. Once, once, we've hit, once we've sent, we're going to sleep for a moment because that's all we need to do. So once we hit send, that will go out to whichever micro bits are around that are listening. The hardware on the board is always listening for messages coming in. And so what it does is it has a queue within itself and it'll keep checking that and grabbing those. So when we hit send, it goes out. So once we've sent a message, we need to actually receive it. And so when, when they're, they're, as I said before, they're, it's always listening and collecting these messages. But it has a queue of messages and we need to grab those so that we can use them. And the command to do that is this radio.receive. And we're gonna store this as incoming. So most of the time, if nothing else is sent a message, that queue will be empty. When we go to receive, it will grab the item from the queue. So it, the queue can hold as many as three messages. So if you hold down the button or if multiple messages get sent and that queue gets full, it will stop receiving those messages. But once, it, once we use this command, it takes that message from the queue and opens up the slot. So once, once we've received the message as a variable, we're going to use this if condition. And this one's kind of special in that what it does is it lets us receive, it lets us check whether or not that variable exists. If no message is in the queue, this will return as false. If there is a message in the queue, then it will run this code. And what this code does is it goes microbit.display.scroll, and this will scroll the incoming string. So if you changed your variables to words, then this would scroll the words. In my case, when I hit A, when I hit B, it's gonna just send the single character. Then after the single character has been sent, we're going to change, we're going to reshow the character that we're currently indexed at, so we know what we're gonna send. Then after that, we're going to sleep the micro bit so that we're not constantly using our processor cycles and power. So now all that remains to do is to flash our code onto the micro bit. So we just hit flash, wait for that to run, and our code's there. So if we have other micro bits running the same code, we can change our letter and we can press A and send that to all the other micro bits. There are some tricks that we can apply to this code that will make it so that we can stop other people that we don't want reading the messages, or we can make it so that we filter out messages we don't want to receive. But we won't cover that in this workshop, but we may cover it in a later tutorial. In the next workshop, what we're actually going to be looking at is sensors and functions. Functions are really useful programs that let us, really useful parts of programs that let us repeat code without having to write it out all over again. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.